Well, so far we've sawn open the jacket and we've removed seven bags of sediment from it. So we're starting to get down towards the layer that is going to produce bone. We're already finding a lot of stuff. Not sure how many bags total will end up being removed. Probably somewhere between 25 and 50 bags of sediment left in here. Um, we're already encountering skull for the mastodon, so that's going well. We're keeping it hydrated. I poured probably about 10 gallons of water in it yesterday. Mostly so that the clay doesn't crack. If, if the clay hardens up, it'll be hard for me to dig through it, and I'll risk damaging the fossils because a block of clay will come out with fossil in it. Uh, the bone I'm not too worried about, but the clay shrinking and cracking will crack the bone. Okay. Uh, other things that can happen too, it just, it just makes it very difficult to get through the clay. So keeping it, keeping it moist makes it easier to work on and keeps it in stasis until I'm ready to work on it. Since I'm actually primarily focusing on the lower jaw, it's important to keep moving forward on this only so much to keep it sort of in check. I don't want it to dry out by itself over here. I need to keep it moving forward a little bit so that when I'm done with the jaw I can actually jump onto this and actually really work it. This one is interesting. I've not processed a specimen quite like this. I've done animals this large but not this complex. The skull itself even though it's very large, shouldn't be much of a problem. It's the ivory, the tusks, that once I get to this end of the jacket, there are three and a half feet of both the left tusk and then another three and a half feet of the right tusk. And those have crisscrossed over each other and shattered into thousands of pieces. So that's gonna take a lot of work. Uh, I suspect that it'll probably be sort of midsummer by the time I'm wrapping this up. The lower jaw was actually removed in a separate jacket by itself, but we were unable to recover the actual joints for the lower jaw. They stayed within the, the main jacket that contains the major part of the skull. So we are starting to encounter that. That's the first thing we hit while digging down into here. The first piece of uh, proboscidean uh, was the lower jaw, which is actually shifted through here, and the jaw joint itself should be down here somewhere. Uh, very soon, I expect to find that. I've already been removing pieces from here, they fit onto the jaw from the jaw jacket, so there won't be any gap in between. We were concerned, you know, when you separate a jacket like that, you want to make sure you get everything in between and don't lose anything, but we actually have direct contact, so it's going to be fine. So that is here. You can actually see right over here, there's the first tooth for the upper skull uh, is starting to poke out. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we should be hitting bone probably within the next two inches all throughout here. Over here, we have the very beginnings of the zygomatic arch, so the cheekbone, and that is just starting to pop out. It's in great condition. Uh, this seems to be what we will encounter when we uncover the rest of the skull. It should be in very good shape. Uh, just flattened a little bit, so where it was hollow inside the brain case, it just kind of crushed it flat, but we can reinflate that basically. So I suspect the next few inches in this whole area should uncover most of the skull.